The story begins with a boy named Ross stepping in to rescue a little girl from being surrounded by a horde of goblins. The girl can't help but admire his bravery. Years later, Ross, now a hero, heads to the Adventurer's Guild to take on a quest. A young woman approaches him and asks if they can team up. The other adventurers in the guild are shocked by her request. The woman notices Ross's sign asking for people to join his party and introduces herself as Narina, a skilled martial artist. Ross introduces himself as a healer but admits he still has doubts about his abilities. Suddenly, immersed. A guild employee interrupts their conversation. She asks Narina if she knows who Roust really is. Amherst explains that Roust is known as an incompetent healer who only knows the most basic spells, even though he grew up as an adventurer. She reveals that Roust has a bad reputation because, after years of adventuring, he hasn't mastered advanced healing spells. Amherst continues, saying Roust was recently kicked out of his previous party because he couldn't use a detoxification spell to save his teammates. Everyone in town knows about Ross's struggles, which is why they ignore his recruitment posters. Amherst warns Narina that teaming up with Rouse might leave her broke, since he doesn't earn money from quests due to his lack of success as a healer. Narina shows Amherst her purse, confidently assuring her that she's financially stable. Amherst cautions her against carrying around so much money, as many of the adventurers in town are shady characters who might try to pie to rob her. Narina thanks Amherst for the warning, but Amherst suggests she join a beginner party instead, since she seems new to adventuring. Amherst even offers to help, but for a small fee. Narina declines, determined to team up with Roust. Though puzzled by Narina's choice, Amherst agrees to help and hands them a party application form, explaining it can be useful if any disagreements arise later. As Roust fills out the form, Narina can't stop admiring him, thrilled to finally be working with the hero who saved her long ago. Roust asks her to sign her name on the form, and she does so happily. Boom! After filling out the party form, Amherst demands a handling fee from Roust. Roust, hesitant, pulls out some coins from his small pouch, and Amherst happily takes the money. Serena, excited to be in the same party as her hero, leaves the guild with Roust. As they walk, Ross goes over the details of the Marmot Labyrinth. No one has reached its deepest parts, so there's no information about the kind of monster that rules it. Many adventurers are curious about the Labyrinth, which has made Marmont the largest city. As they head toward the Labyrinth, Narina worries if they're ready to explore it, since they've only just formed a party. She remembers Amherst's warning, suggesting they should only explore the grasslands to the west because she's still new to it adventuring. Ross agrees that Amherst's advice is reasonable, as the monsters in the grass Grasslands are the weakest around the city, perfect for beginners. However, Ross tells Narina that the grassland is so big that monsters rarely appear. He reassures her that there are more monsters in the labyrinth, but they'll be safe as long as they don't go too deep. Convinced by Ross's words, Narina relaxes. They soon arrive at the labyrinth's entrance, and just as they're about to go in, Narina stops Ross. She insists on taking the lead, since she's a martial artist and he's a healer. Ross agrees, finding her suggestion logical. Narina leads the way, with Ross smiling at her youthful excitement. They step into the labyrinth, and though Roust is glad she's so motivated, he wonders if her skills match her confidence. Suddenly, they come across monsters in the labyrinth, and Narina immediately springs into action. She easily takes down the goblins, showing off her strength to impress Roust. He compliments her, praising her for being so strong. Narina beams with pride, happy to be useful to her hero. The goblins drop an item, and Roust explains to Narina that adventurers earn money by selling monster drops like magic stones to the guild. Curious, Narina asks why magic stones are valuable, and Roust explains that the guild uses the magic stored within them. He teases Narina for not knowing much about adventuring, even though she claims to be an adventurer. Narina sheepishly admits she's not great at studying and prefers learning by doing. Do they? They gather up the magic stones, and Narina wonders how much money they'll get for them. Ross tells her not much since goblin drops are low value. To earn more, they'll have to take down stronger monsters deeper in the labyrinth. Roust is happy with the drops they've collected since it's enough to cover their expenses for the day. He asks Narina if she wants to explore further, and she eagerly agrees, promising to protect him in case of danger. She assures him nothing bad will happen as long as she's there. Her confidence convinces Roust and that they continue their journey deeper into the labyrinth. As they walk through the labyrinth, Roust suddenly pulls Narina back, startling her. She asks what happened, and Roust points to the floor. He shows her that the floor was booby-trapped, and Narina is impressed that he spotted it. He explains that the floor's color was different, something she hadn't noticed. Narina is amazed a healer could find a trap, something usually done by a thief, but Ross tells her it's because of all the experience he's gained over the years. They continue exploring and crouch down to hide when they spot a patrolling half-orc. Ross is puzzled, wondering why a mid-level monster is on the upper floors, which is unusual. Narina suggests they run away, 
since the monster is stronger than them, but Rost assures her they can win if they work together. Narina agrees, and they come out to face the monster. Narina charges at the half-orc, dodging its swing before jumping and landing a kick, only to hurt her leg against its tough skin. The monster raises its club again, but its slow movements give Narina a chance to dodge. However, she's distracted by flying debris as that scratches her. She manages to block the monster's next attack just in time, but now she's cornered. The half-orc swings its club again, and Narina, thinking she's about to lose, accepts her fate until Rost steps in. Rost defeats the half-orc with his sword, reminding Narina of when he saved her years ago. She's surprised he's more than just a healer. Rost explains that he's learned many skills from his years as an adventurer. Impressed, Narina notices a scratch on her arm but tells Rost not to worry it'll heal quickly. Rost insists on treating even the smallest injuries and heals her wound right away. They collect the magic stone from the half-orc, and Narina is amazed at how much bigger it is compared to the goblin stones. Rost is pleased, knowing the stone will sell for a good price due to its high magic content. He asks Narina if she wants to head back, suggesting they've collected enough stones, but she's still full of energy and ready to keep fighting. So, they continue hunting monsters together. So after their exploration, they return to the guild with their magic stones. Amherst is surprised to see they defeated so many monsters in just half a day. Realizing Rouse took Narina to the labyrinth instead of the grasslands, she scolds him for going to the middle levels, where half-orcs are found. Rouse explains they only stayed on the upper levels, and Narina backs him up, confirming he didn't let her explore too far. Despite Narina insisting, Amherst believes Rouse stayed in the upper levels, so she happily accepts the magic stones and goes to the back to sort out their payment. Narina asks why Amherst seems so excited, and Rost explains that guild employees get a raise when they turn in magic stones collected by adventurers they manage. With a smile, Amherst playfully encourages Narina to keep working hard and bring back more stones so they can both keep getting raises. When Amherst hands Rost the payment, He's shocked at how much they earned from just one trip. It's ten times more than he's ever made before, even after splitting it with Narina. That's when it hits him his old party had been ripping him off the entire time. Narina, upset by this realization, reminds Amherst that it's her job to help settle money disputes between party members. Amherst responds that the guild can only step in if Rouse pays a handling fee, but Rouse decides to let it go. He chooses to focus on his new team and leave the past behind. As they leave the guild, the guild master handsome steps out of his room and quietly watches them go. And meanwhile, Amherst gleefully takes inventory of the magic stones. Just then, Handsome walks in and asks if she helped Roust find a new party. Amherst laughs, saying that no one would team up with Roust willingly because of his reputation. She tells him that Narina chose to join Roust on her own, feeling a special connection to him. Handsome listens, gets a description of Narina, and then leaves Amherst to her magic stones. Roust and Narina walk into an inn, where the waiter greets them and recognizes Narina as Roust's new party member. The Roust is surprised that news of their team-up has already spread through the city. The waiter tells Roust that everyone was shocked that someone with his reputation could find a new partner. Roust shrugs off the comment and makes a reservation for dinner in two rooms. Narina hopes they'll share a room, but Roust books two separate ones, disappointing her. After dinner, they say goodnight and head to their rooms. Narina collapses onto her bed, thinking back to when Rouse saved her as a little girl. After he healed her wounds, she made a promise to herself to become an adventurer like him so she could protect him in the future. From that day, she trained hard, waiting for the moment she would meet him again. When she heard Rouse had been kicked out of his previous party, she rushed to the city to form a new team with him. Now, she's happy that things worked out that they fought monsters together and formed a party, but she feels sad that Ross didn't recognize her. She figures it's because she's grown and changed since they first met years ago. Narina realizes Raus doesn't need her protection anymore. He's much stronger than before, and that thought brings her down. However, she snaps out of her sadness and reminds herself of her promise to matter protect Roust, no matter the cost. She refuses to believe that she came to the city for nothing, pushing her doubts aside. As she gets ready for bed, one thing still bothers her. Why does everyone in town think Roust is incompetent, even though he's so strong? Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed, give a thumbs up and subscribe for more content. Share your thoughts in the comments, and we'll see you in the next video.